As explained in my previous Meg video, she'd evolved from a typical teenage girl in the early seasons to the brunt of the joke, relegated to the background and reduced to a one-word catchphrase. Shut up, Meg. However, she's undergone a huge transformation within the last few years, and to prove this, I'm going to take a look at five Meg-centric episodes from the latest seasons to see exactly how the writers have managed to salvage this almost lost character. So if you love a bit of Meg like me, make sure to tap that like and subscribe button, and let's begin. A lot of shows have punching bag characters, or as it's officially known, Bart Monkey. Examples of these include Jerry from Rick and Morty or Klaus from American Dad, and there's nothing inherently wrong with this trope as they are supposed to be comedies. <sighs> what? But when the character is nothing but being picked on, it becomes stale and boring over time. As such, it's important that these butt monkeys do have some depth too. And I have to say that Jerry is a great example of this, because although he's pushed around by Rick and he's a little pathetic, he's still a fun character at the end of the day. Whether he's becoming the leader of Pluto or taking down a horde of monsters, he's more than just being a punching bag every second of every episode. And no one, and I mean no one, exemplifies this one-dimensional trope more than Megatron Griffin. And I've gone into great depth about this in previous videos, so now I won't go over all the time she's been crapped on over the years, because I'm telling you, it's a lot. But I believe that the writers have shifted away from Meg from being the punchline and have given her far more depth within the past four years especially. Now, I first noticed this change in direction for Meg in the season 17 episode Griffin Winter Games. In it, Meg tells her family that she's qualified to play in the biathlon US team in the Winter Olympic Games, and her family are completely surprised by this, despite the fact that she's told them several times. Hey, Ma, I'm gonna go train for the Olympics. Mama! So, taking her family to South Korea to watch her compete, everyone is surprisingly supportive. It really means a lot to me. Of course, honey, we wouldn't miss it. And while Meg was previously shown to be useless at pretty much anything, here she's completely crushing the competition. But in typical Peter shenanigans, he only goes and gets himself stuck in North Korea. So Meg, out of all people, has to go and rescue him, despite the abuse she has suffered under the hands of him over the years. Everybody spit on Meg! Stop! Stop! You got, ah! But it does show that Meg is willing to put her life on the line in order to save his. This kick-ass attitude doesn't come from out of nowhere either. In the previous seasons, we have seen that when she's pushed to the edge, Meg can definitely handle herself. Anyway, she amazingly wipes out the North Korean army and gets Peter back across the border into the south. And although she did miss her competition, she realises that family is far more important, ending the episode on a super sweet note with her family. Her next big episode came in season 18's Better Off Meg. This is where her personality really shines and her confidence grows with it. She's even given hobbies and is shown to be a very good bowler, something that would come up a lot later throughout the show. Meanwhile, her family believe her to be dead after finding her idea to car wreck. Now presumed dead, she embarks on a whole new life, moving to the city and takes on an entire new identity. And this is probably the closest we'll ever get to a Meg spin-off, so thumbs up to the video if you'd actually watch that show. As it turns out, when she's away from the toxicity of Quahog, she's actually pretty popular, but despite having a lot of new friends, she dearly misses her life back home. And although the family took her for granted at the beginning, they do miss her when they think she's dead. During this episode, kids at school finally start being nice to Chris due to the death of his sister. So when he finds out she's alive, he ties her up, and it's at this point where Meg contemplates the best moments of the show, soon realising that none of the clips feature her. I'm not in any of these. Mr. Conway Twitty. Oh, come on! This was a meta look by the writers at how often Meg is forgotten in the show. And as this episode came at the tail end of season 18, we saw a huge shift in how the writers wrote Meg for the next season making her just as, if not more interesting, than the rest of her family. For example, in one episode, we find out that Meg is in trouble with the law for some ambiguous reason, and is fitted with an ankle bracelet. Well, something happened last week and she can't be left alone. Like, legally. 
And by the end of the episode, Meg cuts off her own foot and is chased across the snowy forest by law enforcement. A bizarre focus we definitely didn't see before. And to highlight this change in direction, if we cast back to season 3's viewer male, the family are infused with super abilities, and Meg's only superpower was slightly longer fingernails. Basically making her into one big joke, commenting on how boring or lame she is compared to the rest of the family. But she does get her payback in season 19 when she randomly adopts Quicksilver's powers and messes with her family. Damn it, who's secretly an X-Man? And if that's not development, I don't know what is. Season 19 had two big Meg-centric episodes. Now, do you remember in the earlier seasons when Peter would break the fourth wall and literally warn us that this was a Meg episode? That's right, folks. It's going to be a Meg episode. Stick around for the fun. Well, that's not the case anymore. In fact, since season 17, at no point has anyone told Meg to shut up. The episode Meg's Wedding continued Meg's passion for bowling and really showcased her dorky personality. Bruce Almighty! What it look like, boy? And it's at the bowling alley where she strikes up a friendship with Bruce. You know, the character that's always saying, Oh no! And despite bowling for the opposite team, if you get my drift, Meg falls for Bruce. They start dating and it's not long before they're engaged. And although Lois is worried because she knows Bruce is gay, there are no jokes at Meg's expense from her family here. Just pure concern. In fact, Peter is pleased that his daughter is at least happy. And, and either way, Meg's happy for once. I say we go with it. Speaking of which, there's actually a good few cute moments between Meg and her parents here. You look beautiful, Meg. Really? On the day of her wedding, however, Meg realizes that Bruce is in love with another man. So, putting his happiness before her, she calls the entire thing off, also knowing that she too deserves happiness. This is compared to previous episodes where they mostly only focused on her being bullied and how supposedly ugly she is. But thankfully, her looks really don't play any part in any jokes in the episodes anymore, which personally, I'm pretty happy with. They never really work for me and they did come across a bit tired. The next season 19 episode is called Meg Goes to College, and in order to get their daughter into college, Meg and Lois, as well as Principal Shepard, lied on Meg's application and even photoshopped her into all of these extracurricular activity photos. So eventually, she's accepted into college, but when the Dean finds out that she lied her way in, Meg has to prove that she can do all the things on her application. So she wins a softball, performs the perfect dive, aces gymnastics, as well as singing Love is a Battlefield in Russian. Which she does perfectly because Mila Kunis speaks fluent Russian. Actress Mila Kunis admitted that her character rarely has anything to do in the show, so it's great that she's finally getting some more standalone episodes where she can say more than just two lines. She's like kind of like in the background that gets farted on or sat on. So if I have dialogue, I'm really happy. Her most recent spotlight episode came in season 20's Hard Boiled Meg, fully embracing Meg's quirky personality. Genuinely, she's so much more confident here, as well as having an addiction to mustard packets. This episode also continues to really develop her friendship with Bruce, which makes me really think that they should get their own spin off. While at the bowling alley, she meets a handsome man called Seymour, and together they go on a huge crime spree. Seymour robs the joint while Meg acts as the getaway driver, all while sucking on those pesky mustard packets. But all those tainted condiments had messed with her brain, and it turns out that she was imagining Seymour the entire time. When she crashes the family car, it's her brother who takes the fall for her, again forming her bond even closer to the family because you're my sister and I love you. Overall, Meg has a much healthier relationship with the entire family now, even attending a Stevie Nicks gig with Peter. So basically, what I'm trying to say is the character who I talked about in my previous Meg video no longer exists, thankfully. And although she's still occasionally used as the butt of the joke, that's becoming increasingly rarer, at least balancing out amongst the rest of the family. Within the past few years, the writers have really infused her with a fun, oddball personality. And she easily outshines someone like Chris, who now seems to be the one who is slowly fading back into the background. 
And so that completes the end of the video. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.